Good morning, sir. Good morning, teachers. And good morning, friends. I call you friends because you and I share the same school. I've had the privilege of uh, having this school as my alma mater. Thank you so much, sir, ma'am, for the privilege and opportunity of standing here and sharing my memories of Joya Miss, as we used to call her. Please excuse me if my voice uh, shakes a little while speaking because I might get a little emotional. It uh, usually happens to me whenever I think of her or speak of her. I came to the school in 1990, a young and anxious teenager. I have studied in six schools in all because of my father's transferable job. This was the last school from which I finally appeared for my ICSC and subsequently IC exams. While all my principals, whether mother superiors or father or headmistresses, and all my teachers have a special place in my heart, and when I've had the occasion of visiting any of my previous schools, I have been received with a lot of warmth and affection. Joya Miss has an extra special place. She was the embodiment of beauty, grace and selflessness, something I had never encountered before. Now, all my previous schools were very strictly disciplinarian and uh, while we were aware, of course, of the love and affection of our teachers and our principals, we lived in uh, somewhat, you know, in mortal fear of them. Not so with Joya Miss. We did not fear her. She had the uncanny ability to evoke respect, awe and love all at the same time. The atmosphere in the school back then was very informal and unconventional and it amazed me. It was very different from what I had experienced before and it won me over completely. Joya Mrs. Charisma and warmth encouraged us to approach her with every little thing in our lives, with all our troubles and grievances, serious as well as trivial. Now I was a batch of ten, mind you, five girls and uh, five boys, and there were quarrels, squabbles, misunderstandings, and then we would pour them all out in front of her without really um, realizing that uh, these were things that we could easily settle among ourselves. She would listen very patiently and then very gently make us see sense, see reason, without really making us feel small or guilty. And then we would all be friends again the next day. But this did not mean that we could take this as a license to do as we pleased. Joya Miss had an aura about her and a demeanor which made you want to behave, to live up to her expectations, to kind of redeem yourself in her eyes. A sense of dignity which made you want to behave, you know, to kind of be able to live up to her expectations, to um, fulfill her dreams, yes, and to, um, you know, kind of uh, have her believe that yes, you are a good person, you will be a good person, and you will remain a good person all your life. Studies were important, of course. But extracurricular activity, something that the school is so well known for, uh, was also 
uh, very close to Jara Mrs. Hart. She was so multifaceted herself. I was always in awe of her. She could sing so well. Rup Shagori Rup Dhi Shagori. A song that she used to sing very often and that I still remember today. I can't sing it ever without remembering Jara Miss. She could play the satire. She could, of course, orate. And she uh, could, uh, you, you of course are aware that she was an expert in Ikebana, which is why you have the flower arrangements uh, uh, arranged and organized today. Uh, but she could also, uh, you know, um, how should I put it? Um, well, um, she could make you want to do things. Uh, and I think I'm repeating myself, but I can't help it, I'm sorry. She could make you want to do things that uh, were beyond you. Again, an example, I have never been a student of dance, uh, never ever. And I think the last time I danced was in this school. Uh, and she kind of coaxed me, convinced me, persuaded me to uh, perform in Pondicherry with another friend of mine. And both of us, very unhappily initially, we tried to talk to our miss out of it, saying that you know we've never danced in our lives and we are not capable of it. But she had a special teacher come here, train us. She would supervise the training and uh, she would make us practice in front of her. And then we went to Pondicherry in 1991 again. She made us perform in front of the school and uh, uh, I, I don't think we did too badly. So a person who had so many gifts, who could evoke so much respect in others, uh, who could care so much for so many people, be so warm towards everybody, making you feel that you were the one special person, you were the only protege that she had, is exceptional. I have never since come across anybody like her. When she was uh, diagnosed with her illness in 1998, we were just passing out of university, or had just about passed out of university. And uh, we were very upset because uh, our uh, interactions with the school, because of our uh, education outside in college and university, had, had come down. You know, we, we did not get to visit school too often, and we did not get to see Jaramis too often. And when we got this news uh, of her illness, it made us rush over. We came running. We could not believe that something uh, so sad could happen to her. And uh, we were all full of words that we wanted to tell her, you know, comfort, words of comfort. However, when we came, the look on her face and uh, the way she was uh, sitting, did not allow us to share even one word of, uh, you know, um, grief or, or uh, concern with her. She was, as usual, she was normal, she was happy, she was cheerful, and she was asking us about our lives and our plans. Not one word could I share with her about how upset I was at the news of her illness. No. Instead, one of our very dear friends, a uh, junior in school, he was in the batch uh, after mine, the fire, he happened very sadly to pass away uh, early in uh, 1999, if I believe correctly. And Jaya Mix was there with us and shedding tears. She was so upset that one of her own dear students had passed away so early in life. And she had no concern, no thought for her own days that were numbered. She must have known, she had known, but such was the grace that they gave me that she would never ever admit it, that she would not allow us to remind her of this fear. And I have to love her, I have to touch her, I have to Jarvis has always been special. She is the beacon of my life. Whatever I do, wherever I have been, apart from my parents, I've always thought that this is the one person I should not fail. I should be able to meet her expectations, to see that 
you know, uh, whatever she had hoped of me, for me, uh, I am able to keep it. Of course, you can never aspire to be anywhere close to the person she was, but I hope through our daily lives, through the daily acts of kindness that we do, through the daily, you know, um, concern that we show for our friends, our colleagues, our parents, our neighbors, we are able to meet Joya Mrs. aspirations for us. We are able to show our respect for her through our lives, through our actions. Thank you so much. I might have been a little bit incoherent. I am sorry, but Joya Miss has taught us never to carry notes when speaking on stage. So I am trying my best again to see if I can, you know, be her uh, ideal student, maybe. Thank you so much again. Thank you so much.